Do you guys hear about the uh, the amazing way that the AFL fantasy season ended? Yeah, the draw and registration thing, yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought you meant in our league. Oh, oh nice, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you meant to act like you hadn't heard it so I can retell it for everyone listening to the podcast. Oh, so I think I half retold it for you there, to be fair. Yeah, okay. So for those yeah, who don't know details. about it, and Bush has kind of ruined it. Did you hear about it? Yeah, I did. Okay. But I don't feel too for, sorry for him because apparently he won the car last year. He, he did. Won last year. Yeah. So basically, we had a, they had a tie across all of Australia for everyone playing fantasy uh, or AFL Dream Team, as it was formerly known. Classic. Classic. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, it was a classic story, and this guy uh, who won last year tied again for first place on total points, and because the other guy registered two hours before him, it's technically in the rules that you win uh, a tiebreaker. It's a harsh rule. It is harsh. It's harsh, but at the same time, I don't expect them to just buy two Hiluxes. <laughs> I don't think you don't. No, I don't. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> no, they would just get half of it each. Uh -huh. um, yeah, it can happen on weekends. That guy must be an absolute fantasy jet, though, to, yeah. to come first and equal first two years in a row. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yes. It's congratulations, by the way, on winning our league. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. I wasn't really trying it that hard, so. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I gave um, up on classic, but to be fair, I'd given up on my classic team. I looked at it a couple of weeks ago, and I was in the f like best of the worst finals for one of the leagues I was in. I ended up winning the grandy, oh, no. <laughs> best of the worst. Oh, okay, yeah, I was gonna say it wasn't best of the best. It was like yeah. best of the worst in the league, like the one uh, and eight. Who won the tipping again by like a lot? So, I believe that was you. Yeah, I thought so. Anyway, moving on to the <laughs> the rest of the podcast. This is a particularly big episode for us boys. In fact, arguably the biggest because we are going to be pre previewing the finals for the first time ever yep. um so quite a few things to run through today yeah maybe before we get into the actual finals games we'll probably run through the the teams that didn't make it okay yep so the final 10 yep. um out of the final 10 i'd say bottom 10 is a better term than final oh yeah final i meant yeah. i meant bottom 10 yeah yeah thank you. Implications, thank you aren't entirely accurate um Instead of running through them all, but maybe we could maybe sorry, maybe we could go through the teams that we think did particularly well this season and the teams that went particularly badly. I think the first one I'd like to nominate, just to kick things off, um, in terms of teams that generally have, people are saying have done well, uh, is North Melbourne, who actually yeah, ended up finishing ninth. Yeah. I agree with that. Oh, that was my first thought when you said teams that did well, actually. I think they're definitely the best of the... Of the bad teams this yeah. year, um, I think a Essendon? lot of us had them in the maybe bottom four. Yeah, um, Spoon contenders. Yeah, so no, they did really well. Um, I think their strength, we we probably wrote them off for not having enough A plus players, um, but their strength lies in they're usually a pretty even team in terms of contribution. Um, they do have a, a handy midfield: Cunnington, Zebel. Higgins, if Goldstein. they could top that off with um, a Polek or a Gaff, or both Polek and Gaff, they'd they'd have a pretty good side, and you'd have to um, I'd say you'd probably have to chalk four. them in for a, at least a top eight next year. Borderline top four if they get both, I'd say. Imagine those two on your wings: Goldstein, Yurak, Cunnington, Zebel. Personally, Higgins, you I, I'd have them in the four to eight range. I think it's generally. I'd say I think to the it's, four to eight than I think four, it's generally proven that. Um, that you know, just getting getting players through the trade doesn't push you significantly up the ladder, but I think it it, it it's proven it can help. Um, and I think now that Jared waits for retired, they they maybe are just lacking a little bit in either end of the ground in the in the forward line and back line. I don't line. mind Wood as a second. He's all right. It's, it's off topic. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I think they could be in maybe a five or a six team. I reckon they should. Um, I reckon I, if I were them, I would probably just conserve a little bit of salary cap, and I would go hard at Josh Kelly, who comes out of contract again yeah. in twelve months. We he got very close, reportedly, to signing a deal with North, um, and then chose to stay on at GWS for two extra years. And I don't think he'll be a free agent when he comes out of contract. I don't think so. But yeah, still, but still, uh, to me, that showed an intention that he's staying at the Giants for a couple of years and then he's uh, going to try and win a flag with them and then he might move home to yeah. North Melbourne, which is very... 
supposed to come to his heart, apparently. Apparently, because all this Shield stuff has come out, that's pretty much been a fact with Shield for years, apparently, but he's wanted to stick yeah. on the boys for a bit and then go back to Melbourne. Apparently, that's been known for years. Yeah. So it's it, probably a recurring theme within the club. It's probably the mindset of quite a few GWS players, and that's probably been the difference between them and Gold Coast. The, the Gold Coast, they haven't wanted to stick around because there's no yeah. impending success, whereas the GWS, they're probably like, at least I'll win a flag and then make the move. Yeah. Interesting. There's another cynical way of looking at the North um, that I've been mulling over for a few days and in, in that they, they've clearly been kind of, um, for lack of a better word, stubborn. They've clearly not wanted to rebuild, um, probably for co- like uh, corporate reasons as much as anything because they don't have a big membership base. They, they don't really want to do a Carlton and fall to the bottom of the ladder. But for a team that's kind of going hard for the here and now, Kind of finishing ninth is a bit of a shitty place for them to finish, isn't it? Mm. I mean, they're kind of hit nor- neither here nor there. They, they've certainly overachieved for what people expected at the start of the season, but in the long run... There's a, there's a way to describe that. It's an NBA phase where it's more important in the NBA to have draft picks than the AFL because mm. AFL draft picks aren't as valuable as they are in the NBA, obviously. But it's considered to be a team that doesn't make the playoffs but isn't good enough to be... Well, shit enough, sorry, to get a good draft picks. Pretty much considered purgatory. But yeah, you can't be shit enough to improve through the draft. Yeah. You're not good enough to. I feel like they could be in that situation. The, in the, I feel like Carlton was in that position for years when, um, when Judd was there. That they were, um, they always had such a gun midfield, but they, yeah. you could just tell that when push came to shove, they were never going to beat like Hawks, Hawks or Collingwood John. or Saints at that time, and they were always just going to be fifth or fourth. It was and, a, I mean, if you're not going to win it. As you might as well be like rebuilding and regenerating. I think Judd came at an awkward time for Carlton in that mid to late 2000s era where they hadn't quite finished their rebuild, but then they just traded in the best player in the competition. And there's, there's like. Kind of have to build around him. Yeah, you, you kind of have to start playing for the here and now. And they. Not to go on too much of a tangent, how do you reckon they would have gone if they kept Josh Kennedy instead of Judd? It's a great debate question. Yeah, because the debate. thing is, they had the midfield talent, but. Yeah, they would have kept um, pick three. I still don't think they would, they would have won a flag. Yeah, they probably wouldn't have won a flag, obviously, but do you think the team would be set up better perhaps now even? Um, it's so hard to tell. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a tough question. Because they've completely obviously. rebuilt now and having Kennedy on the list right now instead of, well, obviously Judd's not even playing anymore. But yeah. I think it's probably a win-win for both clubs. Yeah. I mean, Judd's going to attract a lot of support, a lot, yeah. there's a lot of marketing. He was a good player for them. He lifted um, him he into a fifth. Like that, didn't he? Yeah, yeah he and did. they, they finished fifth while he was there. And yeah. Personally, I'd, I'd rather have um, an 18-year-old Kennedy than a 25-year-old yeah. Judd. But, I mean, but you didn't know how Kennedy was panning out. At yeah, exactly. Too. And, yeah. and um, he was apparently very un- very unhappy, actually, at the time with coming back to West Coast, which is a bit of a surprise, mm. being a WA boy. Um, but uh, Probably enjoyed yeah, Melbourne. I'm sure he's loved it now. Yeah. The thing is, he was a je- he's from up north like Jerry Northampton, ain't he? So... The move to Melbourne wouldn't be as big yeah, as a shock true. as a and, metro kid. And the pull home to Perth isn't that high. Exactly. Like, not from Perth, yeah. That's um, another thing with even Paddy Cripps, where all the people like, why isn't there more talk of Paddy Cripps wanting to come back? Because he's from up that way, so it's not Perth. home, so it doesn't really matter. It's going to have to move any, no matter what. Yeah. If the Eagles pinch a flag this year, which I don't necessarily think will happen, um, that would definitely validate the trade and probably tip it in their favour. It is a great debate, though. But if, if yeah, if Kennedy and Maston become premiership players, then... Yeah, was Maston that pick three, was he? Yeah. I didn't realise it was that high a pick. Yeah. Like, yeah. And he was an elite, elite runner, always has been, and yeah. I think that really helped him in the in the draft order. I remember he he absolutely smashed it in the um, endurance tests. Some of the players that went around that pick as well turned out to be absolute duds, so he yeah. actually was a pretty good pick in hindsight. Yeah. Kyle Morton correct. was the other one yeah. we were considering. Yeah. 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 But, um, other teams in the bottom 10 um, to do well? Any other nominations? You could say Essendon's second yeah. half of the season, but mm-hmm. that first half of the season, they just weren't set up. If they were set up in that first six, seven games or whatever and did what they did the second half of the season, they'd make some noise in the finals for but, sure. But would you say they overachieved or do you think they probably finished about where you thought they would finish? Probably about, I'd, yeah, I'd about say right. that's they finished about, about right where we had them. Prediction. Um, but I didn't realise they could be as good as they were as they've showed in the second half of the season. I didn't realise they had that sort of 
they're classic for playing half a season. They've done it for years, like through numerous coaches. Um, uh, 2012, around that time, I don't know, they got busted for by Asada, but it was around that time they, they would usually start the season looking like premiership contenders. Yeah, and then right, like, yeah. I think in 2012, they started 8 1 and missed the finals. Yeah. This year, they've done it in reverse. They started 2 and 6. Yeah. I personally think of the season and it started six weeks later or eight weeks later, and Essendon had played that way the whole year. They would have been the top four team. Yeah. Top four? I reckon top four team. Wow. Okay. But I'm not convinced they can do it for a whole season because it just never happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even earlier in the year, we were reflecting on the Devon Smith thing, but that's worked out, paid big time for him. He's that was probably going to be an All-Australian this year. It was well worth that pick 11. I know, feel yeah. like um, they, cool. they might be might be sitting in that similar position to North we were talking about, whereas they're all... They're all of a fairly mature age, but they're still not going to be quite good enough to do it. Mm. So they're kind of stuck in that limbo area. But um, they've got a bit of youth. Yeah, they got a bit. Um, but I think it's definitely their older players. I think yeah, who are the... who are driving them. It's not the young players. Yeah. I think, per, like Parish McGrath, um, still Francis, really they they're, they're, they're good, but I don't think you could say any more than that currently. Would you consider Danaher a mature player? As opposed to, oh, it yeah. probably would by now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How old is he? Twenty three or something. Yeah, 23, yeah. 24 next year. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He had a bit of an off oh, year, but I still. Dan heard he's, he's a good oh, player. I think he'll come yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Um, one other team I'd like to nominate is having a very good year. Maybe not in wins and losses. Is Brisbane? We've talked about them fair bit yeah. on the podcast, but um, obviously. I think the difference between them this year and last year is huge in that uh, we've talked about how their players have a real brotherhood, it seems, and the talent, a lot of the improvement is coming from the young guys performing well and obviously great support from the leaders in Zorko and Beams. I've even read an article today pumping up Hodge. Yes. Even if he might not have produced on the field necessarily, Mm. he's helped instill that faith and confidence in the kids. Yeah. He's helped create that culture by the sound. I have, yeah... I watched them versus the Eagles on a Sunday morning and um, I was actually quite impressed um, because not, not they didn't get close to the Eagles but I feel like they play a really attractive, um, good game style and I think maybe at the moment they're, they're a bit too young, they don't quite have the quality to pull it off. You see so many times the third or fourth kick in the chain would, would be straight to an Eagles player. Mm. Um, and I think if they can tidy that up, I actually think they could become a much better side. I don't think there will be a premiership side, but I think maybe in two or three years they could be pushing for a top eight spot. The big blow for them will come if Beams decides to leave, and that seems to be yeah. gaining a bit of momentum. Um, seems a bit of a shame, really. Isn't he from up there? He right. is, yeah. He moved home for to be yeah, with his dad. And his his dad's obviously not yeah. around anymore, so I guess he doesn't have that pull. But, I mean... I don't know why. Why I don't know why the pool to Brisbane. Brisbane. Sorry, is Clay Beam still at Brisbane or is he being delisted? I think he's not in the system yeah, anymore. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, think so that. I mean that's probably got, got to hurt a little bit as well. Yeah, but um, I mean I think I feel like it's a good, exciting time to be at Brisbane. I hope he stays. Me I too. mean, it, I think it's just going to be the balance of are they going to come good in, in time mm. for Beams? Yeah, I, that that would be the motivation, surely. Like. Yeah, how old is he now? Like 28? Something like that. Beams? I think I've he's around 28, about... 29. Very yeah. good player. I think at the start of the year, I was singing his praises and mm. I was, I think, I questioned a little bit. You wouldn't take him in a trade in a um, draft league, though. <laughs> <laughs> what, for uh, for Matt Crouch or something? No, I was <laughs> for a back line, basically, because I didn't have a back line. Um, yeah. But... Uh, I don't. No, I don't I think, think he's. I think he's a very good player. I don't think his top quality was ever questioned, but there was definitely a time where people were, including myself, were wondering whether he was um, going to put it together again, like he has. And he, yeah, he's been brilliant. He's been brilliant. I think he's like definitely top ten in the coaches award. Uh, I think it might have even been like top six or something. I don't yeah. quote me on that. Um, so, any other teams do we think of maybe overachieved? It's it's hard to think of any. Um, in that bottom 10 now. Man, no. you could almost, I don't know, how many games did Gold Coast end up winning? Four or five Four. or something? No, you can't. The uh, four, I reckon that's, year, obviously that's that was terrible football yeah. at times. But four wins is probably almost... And they started out... It's about right. So, yeah. I don't know. I, don't, I wouldn't give them a yeah, pass yeah. mark for that. I'd give them an answer. You're saying Carlton only had one or two or whatever. It was. Yeah, Carlton had two, which is the team I was about to bring up for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Um, they had their injuries and, uh, like, they've done it tough, but... 
we we do, we know there's talent there, but two wins has got to be an F. Definitely. If you're, you're going to give them a grade, I was watching something interesting about them on the tally before. Like literally in the Adelaide game, like they had two people in their forward line, they were owning the centre clearance every time, yeah. but they were just bombing it straight to four Adelaide players because they had no one set up in their forward line. Yeah, they had two guys on either wing and two guys in the forward line. Yeah, they won the inside fifties and everything. It was it was a really, really bizarre game yeah. for them. That's oh. coach like I like I think it was Paul Ruse or Gary Lyon or something like that making the point, but that's coaching. You got to mm. if you're yeah. owning the centre clearance, you want people forward to make contests. If you winning the centre clearances like they were, mm. they, they're going to be um, probably getting a priority pick. Uh, yet to see where that will be. Could could be end of the first round. I hope as a Dockers fan, I hope it is. It, it would be uh, a bit ridiculous, I reckon, if they go to like a start of the first round kind of pick. Yeah, you know? yeah it would be. Um, so. Um, it's looking like yeah they might have a pick between sort of fifteen and twenty, something like that. Um, it's hard to see. It's hard to see them getting better, just because they've played some terrible football. But at the same time, I'm a big believer in it's never as good as it seems. It's never as bad as it seems. They will get Doherty back, and yeah, um, Murphy missed a bit of football this year. All the kids are a year older next yep. year. I'm, I. I'm definitely putting him in the bottom two for next year, personally, okay. at this stage, but you'd think they will improve. Okay. <laughs> That's my bet, slightly. So for me, they're the second biggest underachievers in the bottom ten. I think the biggest underachievers this year, in my opinion, is Adelaide. Okay. Definitely. Um, I was going to go with St Kilda. A lot of <laughs> people had Adelaide in the grand final. No. They had it booked in. They, they said, and including us... Uh, we didn't necessarily say grand final, but we had them as a great team. They've got such a good list, but I don't know. Just it seems like it seems like Richmond. It really does seem like the grand final smashed them mentally, physically. It just seems like Richmond ruined that football club. <laughs> well, Adelaide did belt them in round two. That's yeah. the thing. So they, they, I, I don't reckon it's completely gone. I reckon they're yeah. still. I think the beast is. Asleep. They'll be okay. back. It's next hibernating. Year, probably, really. I reckon. Yeah, I, I still think next year they'll be top four personally, provided they can keep their players, which yeah. which might change. You know, McGovern's linked to Carlton. I've heard that even earlier today. The thing I was watching reckons that's a borderline a short thing. Yeah. See that. Like we'll have to put in uh, put a pin on that. Um, it'd be interesting to see what they do with their draft picks this year, making a move for Jack Lacoches and stuff like that. But I think, as I said, like that, I think they've played some good football this year. And I think injuries have also played their part. Definitely underachieved. Like, what do they finish, 12th or something? Yeah. They, that's terrible. Um, and losing to Melbourne by 100 points mid-year. But no, it's a good nomination the, uh, for underachieving teams. I was also going to say St Kilda, who yeah. finished 9th. 16th. Yeah, 16th. 9th last year, um, 14th the year before that. It's their worst year under Richardson. Between him and Bolton, I reckon if there's no improvement by the buy rounds next year, they'll be gone. From either side. So, okay, I've got a different team, actually. The Bulldogs. They won the Premiership two years ago, and now they're... Yeah. At least the Bulldogs, though, um, compared to St Kilda in, and Adelaide, is that they've kind of shown that there's an intention to rebuild and, and just keep uh, moving the list through. And As opposed to St Kilda, who just, weren't meant to be rebuilding this year, yeah. and it's, it's kind of been forced upon them because of just a lack of top-end quality, I would say. It really does show... That even the professional pundits just have really don't know <laughs> which teams are going to crash and which teams are going to come good. Um, this year, especially, it's just, I mean, it's been all over the place in terms of um, people predicting who would finish where. Look at the composition um, of the top four. Yeah. Nobody would have expected Collingwood, West Coast, and Hawthorne to be there. At the start of the year, if you would have told me Collingwood, Hawthorne, and West Coast have better lists than Bulldogs. Port Adelaide, Adelaide and Adelaide, I probably would have said you're an idiot. <laughs> but they've smashed them this year. Um, yeah, so it's kind of hard to get probably a read on where St Kilda kind are at. Of had the talent, I'm a bit fair. worried about where St Kilda um, are at. What was that, Bush? <laughs> Collingwood kind of had had the talent, though, but they just sort of never been able to put it together. Was, those the questions always about Buckley, but those seem to... He seems to have done a hard week last year where everyone was calling for hard yeah. head prior to last year. Definite contender for Coach of the Year, I'm yeah. sure. Right before we move on with our finals previews, um, 
let's make a couple of predictions about, we've kind of already made a couple, but predictions about teams that will shoot from the bottom 10, bottom four, whatever, into finals contention and beyond next year. I'm going to start. I said Adelaide will make be top four, and I'm going to change the prediction a million times before the start of the season. The other one's Essendon top six. Yeah, those two will obviously shoot back in. So it's tough to obviously, obviously, well, wow. shit all over my bold call. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, no shit, those, those guys will improve. Yeah, but at the same time, it is tough to pick who that whose places they will take. I think statistically, yeah. like there's a there's a team from the top four every year has come from the bottom eight, yeah. like almost every year, barring yeah. maybe one, if that. Yeah. Um, and this year we had three. Yeah, that's incredible. I think uh, North Melbourne will be yeah. the team that will move into the top eight. Okay. Um, I I got to disagree with you boys on the on the Adelaide call. I don't think they're in a good place, and um, just looking at the quality of football they've played sometimes this year, I can't work out how a team with that much talent could play like that. So I feel like maybe they've had health issues. I feel like maybe we've over evaluated um, their list. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Do you think Don Pike's the right man? Yeah, I don't. I don't know if it's a coaching. Problem as such. Um, I've got a bold call about Adelaide. Sorry to cut you off there. I've just realised, but maybe <laughs> Tex could be stripped of the captaincy because he seemed, ever since he's been captain, he's been more into bumping guys and big, like mm. promoting himself rather than just being a forward. He, I think he needs that distraction probably taken from him and given to someone a bit more stability because mm. he seems to be a bit unstable since he's become the captain. Yeah, that that sort of thing is always player driven I, d- I don't think the, he'll be stripped of it as such but there is a chance that um, I presume Adelaide will vote every year I think that ha- that's yeah. common in most clubs uh, I, 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 who's yeah. crying out to be captain maybe Sloan apart from that is there anyone else he could be on the way out as well I don't think there's an obvious choice after him personally after Walker and Sloan yeah I, I don't I, I, I don't know thoughts? Adelaide's list intimately enough to uh, to know who's got like leadership potential. Yeah, exactly. like, so, some of the names that come to Maybe mind are like, Laird and Crouch and yeah, yeah Talia that's and yeah, that's not a bad suggestion actually. Yeah. Um, Matt Crouch, he's very young. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Oh, he's twenty four next year. Yeah, it is pretty young, and he's very quiet as well. Yeah, yeah. he's a good player. That's the thing. I'm not not too uh, familiar with how okay. their actual you know characteristics are. Either. The season's over for those bottom ten clubs. So apart from North Melbourne, we've talked about Polek and Gaff. Which of those clubs do you think could make a move for players? Is there any rumours or predictions the that you have that... A little. Um, <laughs> you just got to wait for the end of the sentence to start talking. <laughs> um, is there any <laughs> predictions that you guys have of moves or trades that will happen? Well, yeah, Essendon's one, like the Shield, a lot of noise around him going there. Okay. Like, you could probably see something similar to last year where they got Devin Smith. They'd probably have to pay a bit more than they did for Devin, but... Yeah, OK. You could see something like that. Probably the recruit of the year for me, Devin Smith. Yeah, that's yeah. a good call, actually. E- either him or Tim Kelly, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah true. Yeah. But um, Smith has been very, very consistent. Yeah, he'll be all Australian. Yeah, he, great player. I think proved a lot of people wrong. Everyone yeah. thought he was a non-22 GWS. But, I mean, that mm. shows the talent GWS have. That's true. He could barely get a spot in the He's side. Ex- expendable. Yeah, that's um, true. I can, Essendon, I, I think, will be proactive just because they're kind of like North. I think they're one team that won't want to rebuild and yeah. they're just going to try and manufacture a team through making moves like that. Do you I think, s- could you see them doing a port this year? That's I, well, they kind of did a port last year, didn't they? They traded yeah. in three best 22 players. Yeah. Maybe mm. not Maybe not draft three, like, plebs. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Disrespectful to point out the yeah. plebs. Um, but <laughs> mate, I don't think they need to go that um, hard at, like, those yeah. kind of types. But I think that, I reckon they'll trade in at least one best 22 player. Yeah. I think um, St Kilda are a team that might try and pull off something big. The question Gross. is, will they be able to? I think they're going to throw throw a bit of money at maybe um, Sloan or a... Um, Sloan did resign. Oh, did he? Okay. Yeah. Or maybe a Seedsman. Yeah, I've um, heard mention a Seedsman. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like you just there's one you want to say. <laughs> I feel like there's one you want to come up with. That's not for Hogan the Freo. Uh, uh, for, for Fremantle, I think um, after talking to a few mates, I think there's, there's a good chance Darcy Tucker might be on the table. Interesting. Um, talking to a few mates. Yeah, he's a, he's a very... Uh, talking to a few mates at the Dockers, a couple of players. Um, 
No, he's he was a high pick that hasn't really come off so for free metal yet. Himself, sure. He's from Victoria, so he could be worth a little bit of value. See Vic um, Country, I think, right? Yeah. So he's from Horsham. Um, I think maybe he might be a way that Dockers might try and get back into the second round. Interesting. Um, yeah. So you think so, you, do you think a bottom ten club might make a move? Someone like an Essendon or I think even Saint Kilda. Actually, there's a number of clubs that Tucker would probably be right for. Yeah, they? yeah. He's a, I mean, a pretty high skilled sort of halfback slash wingman sort of guy. So I think twenty two years old, twenty one years old. Yeah, I think he did. Yeah. So. I think a club with a lot of draft picks that's looking to have a player with immediate impact mm. um, could maybe have a crack at him. Um, Gold Coast Suns. I mean, who knows? Freeman might not want to trade him. Yeah. Uh, but I think um, they probably hoped he hadn't quite panned out yet the way they'd wanted him to. Yeah, mm. he's very in and out of the team. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to make a super big call, boys. Um, and this is just not even based off anything that I've Any kind really of seen. Sense. Oh, yeah. Anything tangible. <laughs> Cristiano Ronaldo will go... No. <laughs> Sign with the um, doggies. Yeah. Uh, I, I reckon... At the end of next year, mm-hmm. I think Sir Rioli will play for either West Coast or Brisbane Lions. So why, in the 2020 season. Because of family connection at West Coast. I suppose. And both of the clubs are a lot closer to... Northern um, Territory. Yeah. So well, that's a real shame. I don't, think, I don't think Cyril's done. He did retire kind of young. I think like he's yeah, young. young. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think he'll come back and I think he'll play for one of those clubs. So I mean, mm. we'll, we'll yeah have to see with that. Pretty, one. pretty sure the Eagles have been into Cyril Rioli's ear at like every off season since he started playing AFL. So I, I wouldn't be surprised. I think they, they said four clubs have courted him since he retired, trying okay. to talk him out of it. And I wouldn't be surprised if West Coast is one of them. Right. Brisbane would have been the other. I'm sure as another one as well with Luke Hodge and stuff. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Hodge. Maybe club. Gold Coast. They might have a punt. Yeah. 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 Um, Interesting. Interesting. I'll hold you to it. Okay. This is like when he called Neymar. There's no tattoo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's no tattoo, There's no tattoo yes, writing on it. It's tattooed, man, if that doesn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess one call I reckon will happen is Tom Lynch to Richmond. I guess that's probably a bit of a slam dunk. It's not a hard one to call. Okay. Um, but that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I think that might be. Oh, the other one I actually wanted... I reckon Hawthorne will be all over Chad Wingard. The story broke today that, um, yeah. that Wingard's uh, going to be targeted. I'm not too sure he would move because I remember pre-draft um, there was talk that he told GWS it was that he only wanted to play in South Australia so that they, he would drop down and that's exactly what happened. So whether or not he's open to a move to Melbourne, maybe. But so Hawthorne, you think? I'm thinking Hawthorne because of his skill set. I reckon that's exactly the sort of type of player that Hawthorne like. I'm thinking Geelong. Interesting. Might be the club. Geelong I think they Dalhouse. Don't... They're into Dalhouse True. as well, don't forget. Geelong. Yeah, I mean, that's just a rumour, but... Yeah. Um, I think Geelong are pretty keen to land a sort of player like Dowhouse or Wingard, so I've got a, I reckon it might so be I was, Geelong. I was watching earlier today, apparently the Dowhouse thing is gained, it sounds like it's really gained traction because the mm. dogs apparently don't rate him as highly as it sounds like Geelong do to offer him four years. Well, if Geelong lose Kelly, then they might, he might be able to get, they might be able to get both. Personally, yeah. I'd pick um, Dowhouse over Wingard every day. Fair enough. Yeah, present production, I think, yeah. How much older is Dowhouse? Not that much older. Wingard's 23. Like two years. 24. Yeah. Wingard's probably got slightly more X factor, but Dowhouse absolutely kills him for runs yeah, on the board. Yeah, for output. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I agree. Yeah. But if he goes to Hawthorne, I reckon he will turn True. into an absolute bonafide star. True. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right, boys. Well, we might as well start into getting to somebody's, uh, <laughs> somebody's, <Yes>. somebody's previews. <laughs> Finals. Nuts. Some of these nuts. Um, my girlfriend's going to kill me for saying that on air um, Finals are upon us Finally yeah. I'm really hoping like the, the lineup for these finals does look Very, very mouth-watering She's so um, easy, that's for sure Yeah, it does look pretty good Last year was such a ball ache of a final series i got to say, like there was no good games Other than Chewy beating Port off the, After the siren That was just yeah. about the only good final last year From memory <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> well, it was the only close one. I'm I not, know, I know. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying it was. Oh, uh, typical. I don't think it was actually a good game. No, nah, no. Nah. So it was just a close game, but all the other ones were like vastly disappointing. So fingers crossed. I reckon we got a beauty on our hands. We'll start off with the first game, boys. Richmond versus Hawthorne. Now, if we can just kind of 
reflect on their seasons, I think, before we go into it. Richmond, minor premiers for the first time in a long time. Like last year, they came third. So this is an achievement in itself. They've, they've finished top. And other than four bad away trips this year, where they lost, they've been pretty... What's the pretty word? Good. Pretty good. Yeah, you might say pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say they seem reasonably safe for a finals run in Melbourne. Yeah, they're probably going to play all three finals. Exactly. Um, I, I guess if they lose, there's a chance they'll play a prelim in Perth. Yeah. Um, that's possible, but they're looking very yeah. well set up. And I guess Hawthorne, by contrast, was a team that people um, generally didn't think was a premiership contender, and maybe they still don't. But fi- to finish in the top four is just a that's a reflection on how brilliant Clarkson and his systems and the coaching structure there are that they can turn over the list, have a completely well half a different team. And have just come a, come hard again, and they're going to finish four. Well, no, they're going to hopefully for them finish. Yeah, they've only had one down year. Better. Was yeah, that? They only had the one down year last. They year. did, yeah, and they managed to basically reset. And you think they'd be hoping for a prelim? I think they're in top four. They'd be. I think they'd be hoping to play in the grand final. Uh, yeah, I guess what I meant is like the you'd think they'll make a prelim from here because okay. they finished fourth. There's a good chance to make it unless they go straight okay. sets. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they'll be gunning for this. I'm hoping straight sets. I'm <laughs> hoping for Andy because <laughs> because of the for everyone who doesn't remember Busher at the start of the year. I think um, when I was talking about how I thought Hawks would go okay this year, his his claim was if Hawthorne made the grand final, he will get. A tattoo of Surioli kissing Bruce McAvaney on his ass on um, one side, and on the other side, he'd get Luke Shuey kicking the winner against Port Adelaide. <laughs> mate, that's that's a new shit. addition, but yeah. I like it. Yeah, none of that Shuey shit, mate. Is it, is it a, uh, a colour tattoo or is it black and white? It's I, whatever the hell. I hope I it's colour. It's whatever I can afford, mate, which will be five or all. Yeah, you don't, you don't need like the this. brown and yellow ink. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, what predictions, boys? Jesse? Um, I'm going to say Richmond will win. Personally, I don't, like, with all due respect to Hawthorne, and I do think they um, deserve a lot of credit for where they are, I don't really consider them a massive premiership threat. Um, I'm going to say Richmond by 19 points. Okay. I'm probably going to say it would be within two goals. I think wow. that Richmond will get it. It was wow. 13 points in round three. Yeah. And the thing is, Hawthorne have probably gotten better since then, and Richmond have probably been steady since then. They've just been all around. I was kind of researching the last time they played, which was round three, um, and there was a period of the game where Hawthorne just dominated um, the clearances. I think there was a patch where they won clearances 25 to 10, but they, they were such shallow clearances, and they really struggled to break past Richmond's... Were they the cliche Tom Mitchell... Yeah. Clearances, <laughs> I was alluding to the uh, Tom Mitchell thing. No, not really, but... Um, It'd be interesting, uh, Tom Mitchell had a day out that day, 42 possessions and a goal, and uh, still quite, well, it wasn't quite enough. You, uh, quite they've, probably, they've probably improved. I don't know if it's... Yeah, I'd say Hawks have improved. I've been getting more and more worried as the year's gone along. I do think Richmond have that extra gear, though. Richmond are just a gear above everyone else. Look at the way they came out in the finals last year. I know it was a year ago, but I'd say they're probably a better team than they were a year ago, too. They're a level above everyone else this year. What about yourself, Joyce? Yeah, you can't you can't not tip Richmond. As much as I'd love to see Hawks for the tattoo, um, <laughs> but no, I think Richmond also by twenty nine points. Twenty nine, interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's annoying to me how healthy Richmond have been this year. Like I like they deserve full credit yeah. for being good, but compared to like the Eagles, yeah, they're in Eagles a similar position around twelve. Yeah, and Eagles have been. Just mm. smashed by injury and suspension, and Richmond is still sitting pretty good. Yeah, I dare say if they had a few more injuries, like has Dusty played every game? Maybe bar one. I think he has. Yeah. So, oh well. Say, um, I'm not wishing well. injury upon him. <laughs> um, what about the preparations for these two teams going into this game, guys? Richmond played uh, a very, very close win against the Doggies, and, and the Doggies had every opportunity to win that game uh, at the MCG. Uh, versus Hawthorne overcame a depleted Sydney in Sydney, kind of like a mini final. Actually, yeah. it really was like a mini final. The, the winner Quite got the double ball. chance. Yeah, I actually think Richmond had an ideal preparation there. I know that they didn't play a finalist as such, but the the fact that they nearly got a shock, or they, they, I think the Bulldogs the would have shocked. Doggies on them. their day are a finals team on their day. Yeah, I suppose. But I guess my point is like the fact that they got pushed really close and still won. That's as good as a loss in terms of giving them the shock they needed. Probably, yeah. you don't want to you don't want to cruise into finals, yeah. and in a way, Richmond have uh, have avoided that. 
did, would that worry you with Rick Geelong? We can probably talk about that more when we get to Geelong, but mm. they've cruised in the past two weeks, pumped Freo, pumped Gold. Yeah, Coast. exactly right. Before that, two losses against two actual teams. Yeah, would that's you say true. That's a good way of going in. Ideally not, yeah. but we'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> um, these two teams, I reckon, are, both of them are probably, if you look at their list, or well, their best 22 written down, I don't reckon that they look that shit hot. But both teams appear to be the sum of, better than the sum of their parts, in my opinion. And I think that reflects really well on, coach, on the coaches. I think that's the sign of two really good coaches there. Yeah, it's going to be a very intriguing battle. And you can't count out Clarkson in yeah, a final. Yeah, I'd, agree. Yeah, yeah. I'd agree with you on um, Hawthorne for that statement, but I think Richmond are a very talented list as well. So. Okay. I, it was I think they're about, I think... They're probably playing at about the level that their list is, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay, so with Richmond I, to make a point, eight out of the forty for the final forty or Australian eight players were from Richmond. That's nearly twenty five percent. That's crazy. crazy. Yeah, that's 20%. nearly a quarter. Of, yeah, it'd be twenty. Yeah. Yeah. That is crazy. Uh, I know you guys don't, well, none of us really put that much stock into champion data, but it's interesting that after they won the flag, they were still rated the 12th most talented team statistically. Yeah, wow. <laughs> they do have an even spread. Like, you don't really find that many dominant performances, even from Dusty this year. It's yeah, all been yeah. a very even spread. Uh, Richmond versus Fremantle this year was a classic example where they reckon the three best on ground were all Fremantle players, and Richmond won by 14 goals. Yeah. Yeah. That was just, that's just a classic example. I'll say probably almost the most dominant Richmond player this year has been Jack Rewald. Yes, I yeah. That. He's been crucial this year. Great player. Third Coleman. Yeah. Um, that's player. Hall of Fame territory. Yeah. He's, a gr- absolute he's a Hall of Fame underrated. Player. I'd give him Hall of Fame for sure. Mm. Yeah, he's not one that gets talked about as being one of the best forwards in the game that much. Yeah. Even by us, which is when probably you consider he he they don't they hardly play like a second tall, um, and he's a bit shorter than a lot of the other key forwards. He's an absolute gun, Jack Rudy. He was a gun when they were shit house too. Yeah, I think he won the Coleman when they were yeah, yeah. when they finished like second or third yeah. last in twenty ten. Uh, I can't remember where they finished in twenty ten. Probably yeah. close to bottom. So, yep. All right. Moving on to the next final, and this arguably is my game of the week, where I'm most excited for. Um, despite like ignoring the fact that I'm an Eagles fan, Melbourne versus Geelong. This time it's personal. Yeah, two great games this year. Um, Geelong won. Both in very tight circumstances, um, so to speak. Melbourne, um, they struggled against top teams all year, but the last few weeks have really come good. They beat um, West Coast and GWS, so I think they're they've, they're coming in with a lot of confidence. Uh, but it's impossible as well to just write off Geelong when they've got the players that they do. Absolutely, we Melbourne. You can say just. Last year, obviously, he kind of choked in the last round to lose to Collingwood. Yeah. Uh, lost by... Well, lost out on finals by 0.5%. Well, we think they choked. Looking at Collingwood now, maybe they didn't. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. You, you have to play it as a bit of a choke because they yeah. needed a win and, yeah, lost by 0.5%. So, um, this year, it seems like they've taken the next step. I know they were criticised for not beating any of the top nine. Uh, Collingwood? Yeah, uh, no, Melbourne. Oh, well, Melbourne, both of them, yeah. actually. But Collingwood... Uh, Melbourne specifically at the moment. Um, and in the last two rounds, had a very impressive win in Perth and then utterly dominated GWS. Um, I reckon this... Like, do you, do you guys think... I'll pose it as a question. Do you think the two losses after the siren or on the siren this year against Geelong will have a negative... Will give Br- uh, Geelong a mental edge? I think it'll give Melbourne more motivation. Yeah. It'll bring Melbourne in charge and either go, we've been this close twice, we're not going to get rolled again. Yeah, I don't think... Yeah, it, don't I don't think, think it will give... Geelong a massive mental edge because I think Melbourne will think oh we can actually match up with these guys pretty well we could have won both of those games so I don't think it'll have a huge impact personally I think but either team could win so it's a very hard one to tip yeah Uh, the the preparation going into it as you alluded to before is Geelong have had the two easy games Fremantle and Gold Coast um, and by comparison Melbourne's just played two finals there is the other argument that Melbourne might be a little bit mentally zapped. Sometimes when a team has a big win, they don't follow it up, especially when there's a buy in between. Yeah. That rain's getting louder. I'm hoping it's not. It's it's right. it, I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, the other thing is, Melbourne haven't beaten Geelong since 2015. Yeah. Um, but Melbourne in 2015 is a vastly different team than Melbourne. Yeah, in yeah, the yeah. Today, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I'm just, I'm just sort of giving. Like, I, I, 
it is, I could see it going either way. I'm very bullish on Melbourne at the moment, as I alluded to in the last podcast. They're going to have Viney fit. Jaden Hunt is a test as well, I believe. Um, on the other hand, they're going to miss Dom Tyson and Dean Kent. Um, not, predictions. Not huge outs, I don't no. think. No. Um, in fact, I'd say the ins are better than the outs, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. So, um, Viney's the captain. Viney's the captain, and Hunt's not a bad halfback either. He's got a nice roost. He can roost the ball a bit, <laughs> to say the least. Um, so, yeah, I think that it's a very tough one to call. I'll give it to you first. Who are you, who are you going to tip? I could see it going either way, but I have. Um, I reckon there's a new edge to this Melbourne team. I reckon they'll win this, and I reckon they'll win next week, and I reckon they'll go as far as a prelim. Yeah, Push I can't up. argue with that necessarily, but at the same, it's it is a tough one to pick because Geelong's top end talent, even beyond Danger, Ablett, and Selwood, they've got guys like Duncan, who's a very good player. Menegola is very good. Tim Kelly's very good. Tom Hawkins, I've seen him in some All Australian teams. He's a very good player. He's been in very good form this year. Okay. Even Tommy Stewart's very good backman. It's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, really they, tough. they do have a lot of potential in that best 22. Like yeah. You could say that their depth, depth has hurt them this year with injuries, yeah. but they're going in pretty healthy. Reece Stanley probably won't play, neither will Cockatoo. Other than that, they've just about got all their players available. Zachy Smith playing? Well, we won't know until yeah. it's named, but yeah. I'm, not, I'm not too sure. I don't it's think not necessarily best. Best 22 anyway, like he's been in and out, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah. They've got Blitzarbs, who's probably going to go uh, clash with Gorn at some point. Yeah. <laughs> you, you think. But they've been seen to be using Blitzarbs as a backy. They have, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 it'd be interesting to see how they combat, combat the uh, Coaches Award winner, Max Gorn, yeah, who I was won it today. To that as well. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. First Ruckman ever to win it, I believe. It is arguably a better indicator, in my, I mean, a lot of people's opinion, about who's the best player in the game. I think he's a very deserving winner as for well best best player this year. Yeah, I think he's a deserving winner. Um, I hate to say it though, I'm still not entirely convinced that he is better than Grundy. Yeah, but I, I think they're both great players. I think with that debate, the thing is, you see both because you know usually in sports debates where there's two players involved, people will be defending their guy to the end and destroying the guy on the other side of the argument. But in this argument, the bat evenly spread the people on the Brody camp. Yeah, Pat still pay a lot of respect to Gorn and, and vice versa, versa yeah. rather than like competitive classic to go, to, excuse me to go to basketball here but the LeBron and Jordan where mm. LeBron fans absolutely destroy Jordan and Jordan fans absolutely yeah. destroy LeBron the thing is if that even between these two guys there's amical respect and people going yeah they're both friggin amazing yeah, yeah. it's very very tough you yeah. mean I think Gorn probably just edges him for this year just um, but what Grundy has going for him is I think he's like three years younger yeah. Which is pretty impressive. He's Grundy's definitely better than Gorn was three years ago. Something underrated with Gorn this year, especially since Lever went down, is how they've been playing him as a loose man in defence at times. Mm. Max Gorn, yeah, he's been very good in that role. He's had twenty six intercept marks since like round nine or something, I believe. Yeah, he's he, 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 he's kind of used the way that the Eagles used Nat Nui um, when he was playing well, which was uh, he they they leave him just near the contest where you would normally kick out. And yeah. that's that. Even I noticed up close in Perth uh, a couple of weeks ago, the Eagles kept kicking it to long co- to contests with Max Gorn there. Yeah. Um, part of that is just a bit dumb, and part of that is just like you can't help it. <laughs> it's just so big. Um, what do you reckon, Joyce? As much as I want to tip Melbourne, we haven't seen Gary Ablett play in finals in a long time. True. For me, he's the greatest player of all time. I think he's going to turn it on and have an absolute. One of the great games, mm. and I think Geelong is going to win because I, yeah. I think they're experienced. And to with that point as well, Gary Ablett having a week off with this bye week, that for him that time off is probably more invaluable to him than any other player in the AFL. Yeah. Mm. I probably just so, about agree with you there. Yeah. So I was pretty indecisive, but but with that point, I'd probably have to go Geelong with that argument. I did Gary Ablett having a week off to prepare? I hadn't considered it. Well, yep. I'd obviously consider Gary Ablett, but not to that extent. <laughs> How can you not consider Gary Ablett? Yeah, so two for Melbourne, one for Geelong. I, I, I was just very big on Melbourne, but I, I could see it like no, Geelong agree. coming it could out. Go it way. could go either way, it's which is way why, it's, why it's such an intriguing contest. And I know it's silly, but I could actually see one team just winning by like 45 points if they mm. have a really good day as well and the other team doesn't quite get there. It's... 
I just feel like anything could happen with this game, which is why it's such a mouth-watering matchup. <laughs> Celebrating. Yeah. All right, just coming back from a little break there. Apologies for uh, we had a slight technical issue there. You must have missed Bush's head for the last 20 minutes. Um, had a bit of a camera issue there. Someone forgot to press record. I didn't forget to press record. You can see that I've pressed record. You it just, just doesn't it work. pressed it twice in the space of a second, so it was boop, boop. He didn't press it, did he? Why would I do that? Yeah, you probably just held it for To save the people from the indignation of my face. <laughs> <laughs> indignation. <laughs> All right, boys. Uh, third of um, four finals. Elimination final two. Sydney and GWS. This is, believe it or not, the second time these two clubs from the same state are playing in a final, which is pretty crazy because the Eagles and Dockers have never played each other in a final. And I think Adelaide and Port have played each other once. And now the New South Wales clubs have played each other twice more than the other two. So pretty, pretty interesting. Um, for the Giants, they've had a pretty up and down season, haven't they? You know, they, they made a prelim last year. Another team that's been injury wrecked, not... Not your, to, your premiership smoky, weren't they, a few weeks ago? Okay, yeah, I know, I know. I really got to stop same. making calls. <laughs> <laughs> um, a little bit less confident now that I've seen them play on the MCG and they haven't really... Well, they didn't play well last yep. week. Okay. Um, if they had played better in that game, I'd still think yes. I do think that who have they got coming back this week? I think some people are saying there's as many as seven ins possible for them. I've even heard Sam wow. Williams is a rumor. Yes, yeah, I mean, surely not, but... I don't know. Not following the situation closely, but they're talking about Williams, Delidio, uh, DeBoer should come back in, Ryan Griffin and Toby Green. So some very good ins there, and that pretty much changes the dynamic of their team. Sure. Especially um, Green. Yeah, yeah. You see, he's such a match winner, isn't yeah. he? Um, Even without those players, I'm picking GWS to beat Sydney. I'm yeah. not convinced on Sydney at all this year. Mm. Even yes, with really. Parker and Buddy back in? Uh, yep, even with Parker and Buddy. Um, I think their midfield has actually gone right off this year compared to previous years. Um, mm. We all know how good Parker, Kennedy, Hanabry, all those guys can be, but I think compared to their usual very lofty standards, they've dropped quite a bit. Um, no Buddy, no Sydney. So He is playing though. I yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay. I mean, if yes, he doesn't, so. sh- doesn't show up... Yeah. Um, they won't be GWS, and I don't think they will anyway. So I'm picking GWS. GWS, interesting. They, uh, I was looking through the form lines between these two teams against each other, yep. and generally at the SCG, Sydney do get the win, okay. except the last final they played, GWS won that by like six goals. So that would be interesting. On raw talent, the Giants are definitely better. The Giants SCG, better than, than everyone Sydney. on raw talent. True, right? true. Yes, fair call. Um, on the smaller ground, though, Sydney do have that advantage. I'm going to say Sydney by 12 points, but I'm not confident about it. Because <laughs> I was watching something earlier today where, the, where it was basically Gary Lyon was roasting Jeremy Cameron for not going at the heart of the pill and stuff. Like, there mm. seems to be a bit of hesitation with him since he's got done with that suspension. Yeah, yeah. Not That's... going hard at the ball as much as he should. It's understandable. So hopefully if he can get his head yeah. for that. Yeah, I'm not roasting from but I'm no. saying if he can get his recover from dealing with all that and play. Yeah, I was talking about happy. Gary Lyon actually, but it's pretty rough of him to roast Jeremy Cameron. Yeah, um, but the, he did have footage evidence that was pretty. Oh no, no, him. like I, I believe that he probably has gone a bit softer, but I mean you can see there's a definite reason why he's doing that. Yeah, so. but what I'm saying is if he can move past that and go back to playing his normal brand of footy, that would be an important factor in this game for sure. Yeah, I think just GWS is just talent throughout. It's just, yeah, going to be too good for Sydney, personally. Interesting. Franklin and Parker will, I reckon, make a bit of a difference. Well, obviously, it will make a difference. Last week, they did play pretty well, considering they had those two laid outs, which would have upset quite a lot of the uh, the structures, obviously. And, um, you know, even just mindset, having two two of your better players go down um, in the warm-up. I'd I'd say they're two best players. Yeah, maybe. Probably. Yeah. At this point, Hanabry's yeah. pretty much shelled himself. Kennedy's not been his usual self this mm. year. Yeah, no, that's probably, that's probably good. I think Jake Lloyd, he played an absolutely magnificent yeah, game against the Hawks. Mm. I don't know if you guys watched, but in He'd that fourth quarter, he was very, very impressive. Yeah, He's their um, best and fairest. He's had a great, great year. But, uh, yeah. Mm. Did, you have, did you predict? I... <laughs> 
kind of gave the politicians answer. <laughs> no offence sitting there. Like no the third girl in either way. I mean, that's what I've said yeah. for every game so far. I'll say probably G Dubs, I guess. G Dubs, like yeah. And form even. Kelly back in? I think so. Yeah, yeah. There, yeah, there's just so much talent on that team. It's hard to discount them. Uh, from seventh, like, it's it's been an up and down year for them. They've definitely underachieved. I mean, again, they have the injury excuse, but as I said, I think some of their players like Shield, like Kelly, will be starting to run out of patience. Yeah. Um, maybe I reckon Cornelio is gettable. I mean, I don't think he's ever really made any indication he wants to leave, but I think at some point. The, all the other players are going to leave, and pretty that tough like on Gold him. Coast. Pretty tough to miss out on all Australian Eric and Kenny Glitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, there's always it's always hard to bring people out. Mm. But I think, um, yeah, Caniglio and Angus Brayshaw are probably pretty stiff to miss out this year. I think that Angus Brayshaw kind of divides some play, uh, some people. Not not everyone is as big on him as uh, as some of us. I think I think there's some games where he's got a lot of the ball and butchered it. I don't necessarily think. Like he's a bad player or anything like that. I'm just saying that I bet that might be why. Cornelio is an interesting one. One thing I did think was interesting was Cochin getting All Australian. You're joking. Yeah, he was in the top forty. Wait, uh, which part are you questioning? The fact that I don't didn't like it, or you, the fact that he was All Australian? What? Wait. Cochin. So, w- which part do you were you surprised by? The fact that I was surprised by it, or no. the fact? The okay, fact that he's in it. It's ridiculous. Yes, yes, Absolutely that's what I thought. Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, that's it's just a joke. top forty, but that's a joke from the AFL. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I don't hate Cochin as a bloke, but no. that's an absolute joke. Yeah, just to be clear for those listening, because the All Australian final team will probably be out by the time people listen to this. I'm just talking about the top forty. He's made the top forty. What is it with the AFL and Cochin? <laughs> They love they There's our guy. weekly edit. <laughs> just have to censor that out. Seriously, he should have yeah. missed the grand final last year. Yeah, and now, nah. Yeah, I mean, this <laughs> is anyway. The All Australian. This isn't thing. really a, like a biggest deal as that, but no, it's to not. To have him in the no, that's it really is very ridiculous. generous. He, he averages just like twenty one disposals. Yeah, that's I can think of dozens of players that have had better seasons than yeah. that. And we did talk Ed about. Langdon. As yeah. Arguably, you can almost argue, yeah. Well, Cornelio's had a better year, arguably. Yeah, definitely Cornelio has 100%. Co- Cochin does have those moments of brilliance, and he's a fantastic leader, and I think he's a great dude as well. Like, yeah. L- l- uh, oh, yeah, I'm not saying he's not a great dude. Yes, he's uh, not a good player. But he's, he's, player he's not in the top 40 yeah. players this year. He's no. one that has definitely been given, and yeah, it's just very generous. Every opportunity. Player. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Interesting. All right, boys, we'll move into the last final and one that is going to be very dear to my heart, West Coast versus Collingwood at Optus Stadium. Personally, I'm very glad we escaped the Thursday night final. That was supposed to happen, but then they backflipped and gave uh, Richmond an awful on Thursday night, which is kind of weird. But I don't get the Thursday night thing. Because Sunday is not ideal for any team that has to play the next week. That's true, yeah. It's uh, Yeah, they prefer to play Thursday night. And it'll be interesting to see how many people get to the Richmond Hawthorne game on that Thursday night. You could have had a qualifying on the Sunday. That would have made it if the team's having a week off anyway. No, because the loser doesn't. Either, yeah, so and then they're at a disadvantage. Yeah, so yeah. it doesn't really work. Um, from a viewer's perspective, it's kind of shit house too. Yeah. But Jesse, uh, how are you feeling about the game? Are you I, nervous? I feel... Uh, yes. <laughs> it's still a while away, so the nerves haven't really kicked in yet. Yeah. Um, if, you, if you ask me every 10 minutes who I think is going to win, my answer will be different every time. I'm very... Okay. We, we, maybe we'll just reflect on the seasons that these guys have had. I think both both these teams have come from nowhere. Most expected them to miss the finals this year and both playing in the qualifying finals. Pretty ridiculous. And I think it's out of... Well, Simpson and Buckley are both going to be shortlisted for coach of the year this year for, for what they've been able to achieve. Clarkson's the other one that I'm thinking um, will be a real good shout for that award. Um, again, that's another top four team. Um, Hardwick too, you'd have to think. Yeah, I was thinking Hardwick too, but I didn't want to name all four top four coaches. <laughs> and Simon Goodwin's probably a sniff. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think he's going to win. Yeah, he's a um, sniff, not a... Yeah. <laughs> a um, he's a sniff, not a smell. <laughs> yeah. Not a touch. <laughs> yeah. He's one sniff short of a fart. Yeah. Um, there's a different vibe this time, looking at the Eagles, to how they made top two three years ago. Looking at the demeanour from the club, it's very, it's a lot less buoyant. Like when the Eagles made the finals in, uh, sorry, the, the uh, top two in 2015, 
Simo's press conference after the game was, we're here to win, we're going we're gonna to try and bring home a flag. It was very, like, yeah. you know, um, very assertive. The, uh, it's just an interesting for me to note the difference in demeanour between that and now. This time he's like, ah, oh, like, whatever, we've got to move on. Like, I think, do you think that's the position? I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily the position the team's in. I think mm. just Simpson has become more, definitely more reserved in the way he... Yes. Um, treats the media so I think you, you could argue it's that rather than the I, team being in, in a different position yeah no yeah no that's right I'm not necessarily getting at the fact that I think that's a reflection on the Eagles being weaker I think I actually think because looking back on how badly 2015 ended for the Eagles um, that might be crept into that his thinking exactly like sure. well, we just need to focus on being better yeah. um, so it'd be interesting I really like that though when a, pl- when a coach says something like that it's just which there's a time and a place to like try and make say something yeah. like that. Like, oh, it was be better off just approaching things more methodically and cautiously. Mm. Oh, you know, I'm not saying it's the best way to approach it, but it's definitely the most entertaining. Yeah, it's, de- it's an entertainment factor 100%. I think in 2015, the Eagles were the form team of the competition when yeah. we qualified, whereas this time there's a lot, there's been a lot more hurdles. Um, arguably, fourth or fifth back in the premiership ranks at the moment, like according to some. No, um, no, no, I'm just saying, level like, level. There, is a, there is a pronounced difference between the form line yeah. going into the finals and this time. Nah. Level above. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms, like, I think this game swings on Josh Kennedy's availability. No, I don't. You don't? No. What, what do you mean by that? I just think Eagles are too good. I think Eagles yeah. will win. Well, the Eagles, uh, for, Collingwood are going to have Howe, Trelaw, and possibly Darcy Moore all back. Okay. No. Well, I mean, I don't think Howe and Moore make a huge impact. I think they do if you consider the fact Tom Langdon has been asked to basically be that intercepting key back. Structurally, Howe and Howe was Moore in Australian I mean, contention before he went down. I just think Eagles will win. <laughs> so <laughs> for, for me, it doesn't matter who they get back. I, just I think don't Eagles think it's will that win. definitive. I definitely don't think it's that definitive. Like, okay. Colin would have a lot of guys that they can do things with, like... Even, like, you, would you say Alex Pierce is one of the better stick-on defenders in the league? Yeah. I saw Maya Chick kick his ass on the weekend. What? Maya Chick destroyed him, like, every, so many times yeah. where Alex Pierce was two steps behind him, Maya Chick yeah. had the ball and did something. Yeah. Maya Chick owned him on the weekend, eh? Watching, watching that game live, Maya Chick owned him. <laughs> I just think Eagles are too good, too personally. Good. Big, big. I think they've been written off very quickly by a lot of people. If because they've lost, healthy, maybe. because they've lost, but they're gonna argue. They're gonna get Kennedy back. Who else are they gonna maybe get back? Jetta, that's the only Jetta. One. I mean, that's Jetta's not a huge back. He's all. He's all right. He, um, he helps with the Kennedy, Starling play. Kennedy is arguably like the best player coming back into any side this week. If um, he's healthy. Though. Assuming I actually have total faith in him. I've seen him come in with one leg and kick yeah. five goals. I, I actually think this his inclusion actually helps Jack Darling as much as and it Jack helps Darling him. has yeah. pl- played really well against Brisbane on the weekend, against mm. arguably one of the better um, defences mm. in the league. Um, Even with and, Darling before him going down, he was probably the best player in the league. Yeah, and Kennedy will be back. And Kennedy, as good as Darling has been, Kennedy will be the one that takes the, the main... The main back, so I think, I think with those two, I think they're going to be too good, and I think. Um, I guess Collingwood's Willie back Rioli, depth is average. I think has been super. Um, I'm glad you mentioned Willie Rioli because I was going to bring him up as as I reckon that's the Eagles' wild card. I think his influence on the team is probably a little bit understated. Yeah. Um, it, like one of the huge differences between the Eagles this year is that they have this like m- magical small forward and. He, like what he brings with his pace, his skill, his crumbing ability. Yeah. I think he's going to be a genuine star of the I'm going to say, someone who's had an underrated year as well, Jamie Cripps, he's kicked like 30-something goals this year. He's had a pretty underrated year. He's been He's steady. been very good in the last, in the mm. last steady. few rounds. He's been a steady sort of influence. Not necessarily a star, but steady, does what he needs to do. Um, uh, yeah, I, I agree. I half agree. I think there's been times where he's been had us fans tearing his hair out. Um, uh, tearing our hair out, not his hair yeah. out. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's really stepped up in the last few weeks, and you're right, he's been an absolute, um, absolute gem. Even Liam Ryan, I saw he's already had three bags of three or more yeah. or something like 
that. Definitely played his best game for the week, uh, for the year on the weekend yeah. as well. Um, one player that I think, um, at the risk of going all Eagles, we'll turn to Collingwood more in a second, but one player that's been a bit understated again is Jack Redden. And the, if you look at his consistency with the way the Eagles mids have kind of like dropped around, well, Nat Nui and Gaff and Shuey missed a big yeah. chunk of the year. Redden has been brilliant um, just as an absolute mainstay. Yeah. And I reckon he was a, is a good shout to Eagles best and fairest this year. Yeah, he probably He's is. another one that could have been all Australian over Trent Cotchin. Probably. Like, I don't, I didn't want to nominate an eagle because it just sounds like I'll a better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't know. Like, no, I think I, Redden's up there. Personally, I don't think all Australian, but I think he has no. been. But the 40, the squad of 40, not necessarily saying he'd be on the 20. I think he just had a better personally, year. Personally, I don't think he's a squad of 40 either when you're no. comparing him to Caniglia and a few others. Caniglia's but, better than both of them, obviously. But he's yeah. been very... He's been in terms good, of yeah. if Cochin can get in, Redden's deserving of getting in, if Cochin's considered deserving Yeah, I mean, if Cochin can get in, might as well... You know, give Tabernar and Cam McCarthy. Cam yeah, McCarthy. get Cam McCarthy in the uh, twenty-two. I reckon. Oh, my game on the weekend, mate. He deserves to be in the twenty-two for something. Biggest <laughs> buzz. <laughs> um, Trelaw, I reckon, is the biggest addition this time. That when the Eagles won in Melbourne like mm. six weeks ago, or whatever it was, uh, he wasn't playing. Yeah. So it'd be very interesting to see just how well he goes. It'll be his first game back for a while, obviously. Yeah, could be the difference. No, he's a. He's a very big in, um, yeah. But as as I said, I think the Eagles will still be too good. So, what's your tip? Eagles by. Uh, I haven't really, uh, you know, pushed across which team I think will win. There's been interestingly two finals draws between these two clubs before. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I do remember one in Perth that Collingwood ended up winning. Yep. Uh, Was that two thousand seven? Seven. Yeah. Yep. Um, Daisy Thomas. Played a really good game. I can't remember. To be honest, I think it just blocked it out of my memory. Yeah. But yeah, um, and in 1990, uh, Sumich hit the post in the goal square to draw oh, wow. the game on the siren, or just before the siren, and uh, Collingwood won the replay by about ten goals. Yeah, but um, no, I think West Coast will win. I'd probably give them a slight edge, but I think it's not definitive for sure. I I've I've changed it like fifteen times. I've tipped the Eagles by three points. Yeah, and uh, their far, their premiership hopes rests. Well, both of these teams kind of have their premiership hopes resting on this game. Because the loser, if they win in week two, will play Richmond at the MCG. Yeah. If Shuey kicks a goal after the siren, I will go on a killing spree. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to just for another factor. The thing is with Collingwood, like against legitimate teams, their record is remarkably average this year. They it like is. Eight percentage of like eighty, like two and seven or two mm. and nine or something like that. But there was also true of Melbourne before they came to Mel- uh, came to Perth yeah. and. But has Played Collingwood really well. actually had those sort of games where they first a legitimate team and proven it yet? I don't think they have. No, they they got close to Richmond. I think they beat one up yeah. one top tier top eight team. I can't remember. No, who but it was, yeah, so they're like two and seven. You could, oh, say, Hawthorne, I think. you could say yeah. Melbourne were in the same position mm. when they versus the Eagles and then they won the game. Yeah, but mm. Melbourne's probably a bit more. They've gone through more adversity and learned how to overcome. True, they did lose to Geelong like only just yeah, twice. twice. Hollywood were pretty unconvincing against Fremantle, you have to say. Yeah. Um, Fremantle, I, I was rooting for Fremantle because of the implications yeah. for, on the ladder for the West Coast, but um, I actually felt West, uh, Fremantle were the better team for the whole game. And then, obviously, like, quality teams just come, come yeah, pretty yeah. strong in the end. Fremantle had a few, like, very tired young players yeah. that uh, ultimately cost Nathan, Nathan, Nathan Wilson, unfortunately, coughed up the ball. Mm. Yeah. Brandon Cox fumbled it when he had two steps and was shot on goal. Yeah. Cam McCarthy couldn't get water if he fell out of a boat. <laughs> um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, mm. West Coast. Interesting. Well, I've tipped four pretty close games there, so fingers crossed that we're going to have a really exciting yeah. round. Um, all right, boys. Well, just before we finish up the potty, unless there's anything else I want to say, I uh, want to bring it to the viewers that we are going to bring in a Bush's mail sack version. Do you remember, like, what was it? Um, Sam's, Sam's mail bag. Yeah, we're going to... Bush's mail sack. Um, <laughs> <we're>, <laughs> no, we're not going to call it that. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the floor to people to write in more and ask us questions about what, he, what you want us to talk about. Uh, we've got nearly 400 subscribers now. 
And I uh, just want to say thank you again. And um, yeah, we want to hear from you. So you can either comment on the video um, just below or you can actually email us at truefootypodcast at gmail.com if you have something a little more personal. Address it to uh, Bush's mail search. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> M A L E. So, is it just going to be me doing a Sam Newman saying politically incorrect I mean, stuff to people's it's questions? A, it's it's a no list? topic um, mailbag. So, I mean, mm. if you want to call in and ask what Bush's favourite Star Wars movies are, oh, ask that. If you want to call in and ask NBA football trivia. questions, NBA trivia. Mm. Um, so, this will open up people to troll me big time. Bush has been. People have got. Yeah. Stupid stuff. Okay. He's a massive Manchester United fan, so ask him. <laughs> Burnley, mate. About that. Don't do me like that. Burnley. <laughs> Sorry, mate. He's a massive Burnley fan. W- Just w- like w- Jimmy expert. Anderson from the England uh, cricket team. Oh, right. Yep. He's the number one ticket holder. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> a bit of random trivia for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, just girls' advice. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dating advice. Oh, my. <laughs> Yeah, I'm clearly you... an expert. Anyway. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, we'll see you again real soon.